minus 20 seconds. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. I'm James, what it would look like if diabetes came to life. <laughs> I've got his wish to be big. <laughs> How is everybody this evening? What are we looking at again? So we are taking a look at the Afuero Laser 2, uh, also known as the O Tour. So um, we did a laser um, a little while ago. There is uh, there's a video on that one called the Atom Stack A5 Pro. That was our first laser diode laser. Um, this is now our second because Mike demanded one as soon as he uh, finished editing the video. So, um, so we will be unboxing this one. Um, as you can see, I've already opened it. I don't know what version this is. So there's three. Oh, there's some certificates. Oh, they all look fake. <laughs> they don't, they're printed on very fine paper. I like that. Okay, right. So for anyone who wants to see, this has uh, this has some certificates. Look at that. It even says certificate on it, so you know it's a certificate. This has also got certificate written on it. And this has also got certificate written on it. So that's good. Certificates. This officially, this well, you know what this means? This laser has more GCSEs than I do. <laughs> How amazing is that? So now I'm going to drink some beer and assemble a laser. Because I'm 100% qualified. Um, right. We've got a user manual that is in 900 languages. Uh, but none of those are assembly instructions, so that's good. I right, so there are three versions of this laser. So and we don't know is, which one we've got yet. We don't know which one we've got. So there's the LU2-2. That's a one watt laser. So that's really just for engraving. Um, then you've got the LU2-4, which with the SF which is for engraving and cutting because that's a five. And then there's the LU2-4 LF, which comes with an air assist nozzle on it. I don't know which one this is. So, oh, this is the LU2-4 SF. So this does not have the, um, it is a five watt laser. It's also very greasy, yeah. Um, so it is a five watt laser, but it doesn't have the air assist on it. So the air assist one comes with a um, comes with a little nozzle that goes over the end. So you can see with this one. Oh, so this actually works very similar to the um, to the way that the one that goes on the Hydra works. Oh, Interesting. Bit that pops on the bottom. So just hold on. There we go. So you've got the laser. This is the laser in here, obviously, and then this is the uh, this is the lens cap that just goes on with magnets. Now the LF, this is the SF version. The LF version comes with an air assist already attached. It doesn't come with a pump, but it does come with an air assist. Um, so uh, so yeah. So if if you want to do deep cuts. Me and Carl have been testing out more than a few things at the moment. Um, if you want to do deep cuts, you should really get one with uh, with with the air assist on. So it's well worth spending the. Hold on. It's well worth spending the. They're the same price. They're the same price. Okay. Well, yeah. So for the same price, why wouldn't you get the one with air assist? Okay, anyway, right. We get our obligatory glasses. We won't be using the, uh, these. We'll be using... The Delta, Carl, is... That's a bit echoey. Uh, it's just doing its last print so we can do the review on it tomorrow. 
Yes, so we will be doing the review on that tomorrow. And I have to say, for a very cheap printer, it's good. No, it's good. It's really good. Like surprisingly good. I was I was expecting, if I'm honest, to really not like it. I thought um, I thought it just wasn't gonna. It just it would have been fine, but I thought it was gonna be a sort of bit like an end of three. Um, but honestly. It's been pretty bang on. So we get, oh, a tiny paintbrush. Well, we get a proper little accessory kit with this one, don't we? So you get some, you get a tiny, tiny paintbrush. Look at that. Um, oh, it's soft. Uh, then you get some screws, which I'll lose. You get some cards and then this i'm pretty sure this is uh hey oh come on man brock 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 three nozillion close yeah that work all right <laughs> i could just put him up on the screen couldn't i have been easier i could have literally just gone hi oh right fine i show for the short focus and the long show yeah so um so not expensive really to be fair um russ he's talking about in pounds that's why so russ you're looking you're looking in dollars he's looking in pounds right so get that out get this out i am acutely conscious of the fact that i really have yet to see there's an e-copy of the manual online but there actually genuinely isn't any assembly instructions like there's actually not any assembly instructions so let's carry on with this that's a i don't know what that is Another cable for something. USB cable. A not just an American power brick, but an American power brick with an integrated power supply. So that's going to be an issue straight out the gate. <laughs> X man. You've got a converter in there, haven't you? Uh, probably. Does beg the question as to whether or not this has got a 240 volt switching power supply, though. Because if it doesn't, yeah, 110 to 240. Fair enough. Okay. We've just got to worry about the plug. Right. That's now empty. We'll figure that out in a minute. I wonder if it's got the same. It has the same power supply as our other one. <laughs> so I guess we're using that power supply now. Right. So first observations. It looks really quite similar. I am going to go and see if I can find a software download user manual. Let's see if we can't. YouTube DIY. Oh, come on. There we go. Assembly Guide PDF. Fair enough. So it's on their website, at least. So a little bit of information about the size of this. It's got a print vo or it's got an engraving volume of 390 by 390. So it's slightly smaller than the Q5. But um, and, and here's the really big one. When we were talking, when we reviewed the A5 from uh, from Atomstack, there really are no safety features on that print on that on that okay. machine. There's there's nothing. This has an active position protection. So basically, if you tilt the laser, um, then then it detects the tilt and it shuts the laser off. There's an active connection control cut off. So if the PC crashes or or the uh, or the USB cable is pulled out mid engraving then uh, then it shuts the machine off there's an exposure limitation 
where if they, there's not been any um, motor movement for a period of time, then it will shut off to stop you burning your garage down. And uh, <laughs> it also says it's got a power safety control. So if the, if the power is cut off um, to the laser, then it turns the laser off, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say that turning the power off also does. <laughs> if you well, stop you putting electricity in it, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the laser doesn't work. But I <coughs> assume what it actually means is that when you turn it, when it turns off, it doesn't automatically turn back on when you turn it back on. So there's a power cut, then, yeah. They've got the same add-ons everybody else does. So there's a screen that you can get. There's a Z height lifting device. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's like, okay, it's like a screw. Then they've got a machine enclosure coming soon. And they've got that Y-axis rotary thing that means you can print on the side of cans or cups or glasses or what have you. So now we've got to try and figure out where that downloaded to. Uh, there. Is it that one? Let's find out. No. Nope. That's a fun game. So where did it down? Oh, it's just in the open that page then. Right, fine. Lots and lots of warnings. Lots and lots of warnings. Okay, it doesn't... Not technically the right one, but fine. Yeah, we've got a bunch of things. So we now so got that got that. Well, I'm already not feeling good about this. <laughs> How did the app stack come? I can't remember. How did the what the what what? The atom stack. How did that come in the box? I can't remember. The atom stack. Oh, it came. It came in a box and everything. Yeah, it's still, still. No, was it not in box. parts? Uh, yeah, it was in parts. Yeah, it wasn't assembled or anything. There we go. Right, that's better. Download the right manual, and it might help. So it is slightly smaller, Carl. Yeah, but not by much, to be fair. You know, twenty mil on 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 X and Y, like it's not really, it's not really, um, or I would have said it's not really a big deal. Oh, we have to zoom in on that then, aren't we? All right, fine. I'm already annoyed. Hold on. I've got like half my browser window open, so uh, if you break this one, it's for Mike anyway. That is very true. That is very true. I shouldn't get stressed out about breaking Mike's things. No, we're giving this one away. I thought we were giving away the A5. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, we're giving away the A5 because it's got mm -hmm. a 5 in it. This hasn't got a 5 in it. Uh, it wouldn't even make yeah. sense. Yeah, that's true. Everyone would be like, oh, it's not got a 5 in it. What's it got to do with getting to 5K? Side note, guys and dolls, we've got to 5K. Well, that's our members. So I now feel I now I now can't walk down the street without people recognizing me. It's a huge a burden. Problem. Yeah. <coughs> that's that way. And then that's we're also going. filming the um the review of the Ender print mill tomorrow. Yes, we are. Infinite Z. So that has been a journey to get that filmed. Um to get that ready. Um, so for those who remember those who, those who watch the channel regularly, which I think is pretty much all of you, to be fair. Um, we did a, uh, we did an unboxing of an Ender three print mill that turned an Ender three into an infinite Z CR 30 style belt printer. Um, it has taken us or more specifically me, um, <laughs> ages to get it Six properly weeks. working. Um, um, because just, just to be said, nothing at all to do with the kit. No, no, not at all. So, um, so would love to win this one too. <laughs> oh, that means we'll probably have to get this one away as well, doesn't it? 
Michael have to get another one? <laughs> no, because I've got the other thing coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Getting all the toys. Um, yeah, so we were we were doing the review, and the main issue with the um the main issue with the uh with the kit is nothing to do with the kit. It's to do with the fact that the kit is put on an end of three. That's what's bad about it. And it's the only thing that's bad about it, if I'm honest, because the, the machine itself is brilliant. And Does this exactly end of three is probably seen. done. That end of three has probably done less than 50 hours printing. Yeah. So if you can remember way back, we had the Quinley, which is the print mill, which will continuously continuously print and eject it off of the front of the ender. We, I bought that ender specifically for that to go on to. And mm, it was that for a little yeah. while, wasn't it? Not long, a yeah. couple of months. I then we'd done the Black Knight. Nice. Then we did the Black Knight upgrade on it. Yes, um, we did. And the Black Knight was really good, to be fair. Yeah, but to be fair, probably only done 20 hours printing, 30 hours yeah. printing. And now it's been changed to this. And You're probably not going to use this. Why either. I don't like Creality Tool Heads. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the issues with it are ultimately, as we, as, as we just said, that they're all. All the issues are um, are to do with the fact that it is that it is a Creality machine. I just hate the Creality other toilets. I hate them. Wouldn't be the D one, would it? No, it's not the D one. Which one's the D one? Am I thinking of the? Am I thinking of the one I'm thinking of? I don't think it is. Oh, is that the maker block? No, it's not that one. At least show everyone the sword. Not yet. They can all wait for the sword. So on the on on the end of three uh, belt video, we will be showing you that we printed a uh, we printed a sword from the Witcher. Oh, the Sermon D one. Just a guess. No, it's not that one. Uh, so we printed the the sword from the Witcher. Um, I didn't actually realise just how long his sword was. If I'm perfectly honest with you, um, I kind of thought that. Hold on, there we go. I kind of thought that uh, that his sword was like. I knew it was a long sword, but I didn't know it was a long, long sword. Well, you look at my. Sense. If you see my Aragorn one, that's well over a metre. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention, which is very possible. I would measure it, but I don't know where my tape measure is. Well, that's very interesting. So, But what it does prove when you did the sword is um, the roller extender kit that goes on the front of it, that's uh, pretty much a must. Yes. So, um, so Edge of 3D, I absolutely recommend that everybody goes over to Scott's channel and checks out his series on the end of three because he's done loads on the belt printer. He's done a whole series on assembling it, on calibrating it and all of that kind of stuff. We're doing a review, but if you want to actually figure out the ins and outs of trying to use the thing, absolutely go over to Scott's channel and check it out. Um, isn't that what all plumbers say? I don't know where my tape measure is. Probably. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't know. Um, oh, okay. So this thing I goes... rarely use a tape measure during plumbing. Uh, I tend to just do everything by eye. I think his insinuation is that that's what all plumbers do, and that's and he's unhappy about that. He doesn't doesn't like the fact that plumbers are no non are so nonchalant about everything. Yeah, I've yeah, never held plumbers sure. to that higher standard, but I always use me tape measure when I'm doing carpentry, though. That plugs in there. This plugs in. I don't know whether the. I don't. I don't. I don't think you could laser engrave PLA, could you? It just melt. Yeah, it just melt. It would just melt. I don't. I, you wouldn't be able to do that. 
Scott's desperate for us to try and do a uh, a long sword in chocolate. <laughs> He's hoping that we could pull the. Uh, you, we we wouldn't be able to do one of them. Do you know them little swords that go like in drinks that are, like hold like a cherry or Mate, something? I couldn't do a square. <laughs> let alone let alone could you do a sword? No. I'd have had more chance of sitting down at a pottery wheel and having like ghost come up behind me and help me to have and help me I'm to shape you why you make something. a pot. Yeah. There's more of a chance of if you left it alone and it would <coughs> spontaneously turn into whatever it is you want to see than there is of that printer doing what doing what it reckons it can do. Those who haven't seen our Lucky Bot video from WeBooks, please go and check it out because WeBooks have specifically said to us now they will no longer be working with us. <laughs> they were they were profoundly dissatisfied with the content of the review. Well, they weren't Everybody happy else it. seemed to like it, but they're very unhappy. <laughs> they weren't happy with it. They must have laughed they, a they bit, surely. Like they, they weren't on board. They didn't think it was... Um... They must have laughed a bit. <laughs> Oh, I know I didn't. <laughs> I maintain that I've just, I've never been so consistently mugged off by a machine. It's bad at everything that it was supposed to do. <coughs> when we um, have a change around, we could put it on the wall next to the ender. Scott, if you want to adapt it to the lucky bot, I'll tell you what you need to do. Go and get some chocolate. Put it on the lucky bot, just lay it on the bed, turn the heated bed up to about 80 degrees so it melts into a really horrible brown smear. So it just looks like you've, you know, you've hit a diuretic child at 70 miles an hour on the freeway. And then, and then you've saved yourself 20 hours. The lucky bot would do. And you've got yourself an end result. And you've saved 20 hours. And you save yourself an awful lot of time, yeah. 14 hours of my life that I'm never seeing again. I'll just never see that. <coughs> to stand at the gate of heaven. All you would in reality do. Why I wished away a large portion of my life. Scott, in reality, all you'd do is completely destroy the belt on the printer. <laughs> That's yeah. all that would do. I want to see the before James calm down footage. Didn't even get to film that. <laughs> it was just me stamping around, screaming. You know when, uh, I'll tell you what I was like. You know well, when the, the bird... Before well, the video, say, the, you was a lot like you was in Home Alone. You was a lot like you was on the video, but there was a lot of swearing in it. Yeah, there was more swearing. Yeah, that, I'll tell you what, that video would have got us demonetized in a, in a heartbeat. Jesus. I sounded exactly like the burglar on, um, I mean, man, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I said hello to Derek yesterday, and uh, for some reason, I just kept typing Nan. Like, I kept saying to him, hi, how are you? How are you doing, Nan? And he kept going, I, I don't know, what, why do you keep calling me Nan? And I didn't have an answer for him. Like, I don't know why I kept calling him Nan. <coughs> No, so that's got to go on there, like that. This plugs into here, like this. All right, I've got to. So I'll say this: they've put a decent amount of thought into the electronics for this because this actually grounds all of the frame, which the other one definitely didn't. There we go. Right, so that goes like that. Then we've got some, and as well, this does a better job with the cables. So this has got um, cable ties so that you can, uh, it, it doesn't go quite far enough in my eyes because it should really have a cable drag chain. Um, 
and it doesn't. So I would have liked to have I would have liked to have seen that. I'm just looking to see. All right, I'll give up. How do you make that go at the right height? Does that really go in that side? Surely not. Oh, it's the thumb screw. Okay, fine. That's a little weird. So there's like a thumb screw that goes on the side of this, which pushes a little... Um, so if I show you one here. So here... Hold on. There we go. So in here, you can see this little, um, this little latch. When you slide this on, this thumb screw goes in the side, pushes on that little metal latch, and that's how you adjust the height. So you go, hold on, there we go. So you move it up or down, and then there's a thumb screw here that you do up, and then that's what holds it in place. Not bad, really. Fairly ingenious solution, I suppose. I'm not entirely clear on where that grounding is supposed to go, which I'm not happy about. Oh, is that just literally screwing to the back? No. <laughs> okay, I'm going to answer that question at least. All right, fine. I'll look at the instructions. We're all happy with ourselves now. Oh. Oh, there's meant to be a... Right. So if I take the little cap off the top and then it grounds underneath this, it looks like. It's where the whole laser falls apart. Oh, just one of the top screws on the laser. It doesn't go underneath the cap. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Right, so let's move that all the way to the extreme. And then we can cable tie this up. So, who on the stream, while we're while we're waiting for me to finish this, who on the stream has been watching? Um, who's been watching uh, the new John Cena TV series called Peacemaker? Because it's amazing, and I'm actually obsessed with the opening credits. Like John Cena does a dance, and I've I've never I've watched five episodes now, and not once have I skipped it. I watch it every single time. It's amazing. And I normally don't like a lot of the... Um, I normally oh, don't a, like it's, a lot. It's on HBO Max. Yeah, it is, yeah. So I don't normally like the sort of made-for-TV stuff. I feel like it, it's never really... It's never really great. Um, but honestly, I'm, I'm obsessed with this thing. It's absolutely brilliant. Is that gonna? Oh, should have given myself a bit more space there. Not watched it yet. Oh my god! Everybody needs to watch it so I can talk about it with somebody. Mike hasn't watched it either. I don't really know what you people are doing during your work days. Uh, I've been watching, rewatching Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> right. Okay. So wasting your day then is what you're telling me. Well, afternoons. Right. There we go. Right. So, like with the uh, so on this, um, like with the uh, like with the Atom stack, this doesn't have end stops. So the only way it knows it's it's a software home, not a hardware home. So it can't home itself wherever you turn it on. Was wherever wherever the laser starts from, that's where home is. So not awesome, but don't really suppose it matters too much. With this being a touch smaller, 
I'm assuming this should stand on my other waste board. Yeah, it does. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, so wherever you start it is where it um is where it thinks home is. So let's plug that in. It's a fun question. How do you know it's on? <laughs> well, I suppose there's only one way to find out. We plug it into the PC and see what it does. Oh. The cable's not quite long enough and it goes over my keyboard. That's upsetting. Well, it doesn't make bingly beep noises, so it does make me feel like it's not on. Is there like an on switch that I'm missing? Oh, yeah, there is. Makes sense. <laughs> right, okay, you have to press and hold it. I think. Well, there's lights flashing, so... Well, the little light's flashing. There's a little red light that's flashing. So, I guess that means it's on. Right, let's open up light burn and let's see whether or not it detects it. Devices. Find my laser. Yep, 390 by 390. Found it. So, A U F E L O. 390 by 390. Front left is where it homes. Finish. Okay. Uh, what have we got to engrave? Has that got anything on it? Oh, it's only got stuff on the front. No, that's going to. Bit of plywood. That's not going to work. Um. They also sent a lot of stuff to engrave on this, didn't they? Yeah, so they sent all of this, which is quite a lot. So, so, um, so there's plate steel. There's denim. You're there's gonna. Leather. You're gonna vijazzle your jeans. If you, yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna really uh, be the jeans guy. There's um, there's this. So let me pull this up here because the I'm assuming the oh, there we go. I'm assuming the insinuation is that it did this, which if it did, that's gorgeous. Like it's got a bit of texture to it. It's I mean it's perfect. It's a perfect image on the leather. There's a bit of leather there to it's try. Basically, it's basically cattle branding. Yeah. Then there's a couple of MDFs, and then there's a couple of Birchwoods. And in these MDFs, if I remember rightly, yeah, there's also a uh, there's also a, a strange lady's face. I don't know who that is. It looks like Amy Winehouse if she hadn't done all the drugs. No, it looks like the woman off the meatloaf video. <laughs> woman off the meatloaf video? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure, and I'm not 100%, but I've watched a few Vice videos in my time, to I think that the tattoo that's on her arm is the chemical symbol for MDMA. So that's a, that's a person of high repute. <laughs> and, then there's, uh, and then there's a couple of these, uh, these Birchwoods. So we're going to chuck one of these down here for the moment. And we're going to see what we can do. So... Let's pull our logo in to start with. So this, so this is the five five watt laser, which means in theory it should use pretty much the same settings that our um, that our atom stack, atom stack uses, which is always good. So we'll make that a little bigger. That's too big. Put that there. Image, so it's doing 1800, we didn't put that up to 60, 1800 speed with 
two passes. You select. Okay, I don't know what that means. Oh, do I have to click that? Okay, well, I mean, I... It's a good chance that what we might be looking at is the power supply might not be right. So this is a output of 24 volt at 2 amp, and that is an output of 12 volt. Yep. Okay, well, that answers that question. So we need to find what I did with the thing that I promised my wife I wouldn't lose. I was really clear about it. I said, yeah, just give it here because I won't lose it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And here we are. <laughs> uh, You're not going to find it. You're not going to find it. Why? Have you got it? It's on the power supply to the... Uh... No! Is it really? Yeah. Oh, she's going to be so angry. <laughs> All right, well, only if she wait. wants to plug something in American in the next sort of 15 yeah, hours. Besides, Laura, that's going to happen. You say things now while I go and find a different one. <laughs> Just as he said that, I had a sneaky suspicion. I was like, oh, and I'll pick that resin printer up. Oh, sure, I see the white plug on the end of it. And we have. Anyway, what's, um, what's people printing on that in a minute? I'm not doing anything because I've been so busy at work. I haven't had time to be out here. Carl, you must be doing something. Don't, don't answer too quickly, Carl, or anything. Don't help me out with that. Um, now, what we have got coming is... Um, CNC machine. So it's a CMC machine where you can actually change the tool head and put laser on. So it's it doubles up as both. I've always wanted a CNC machine. Um, so that's what we've got coming. Probably not going to be after till after Chinese New Year now because I don't think they shipped it before they went away. So oh, you've made an enclosure. Right, and a stroke of pure genius. Not only have I managed to find a spare, uh, not only managed to find a spare one, but I also managed to convince my wife that she lost the other one. Yeah, nice work. So, uh, so I'm very pleased with myself on numerous fronts. So let's pull this up and let's try again. Another great reason why she doesn't watch the stream. Not quite sure why they've made life harder for literally everybody by doing this, but... Do you want to swap the screens over? Hmm? Do you want to swap oh, yeah. the screens over? There we go. Right, so... We reckon... Where's this guy? So a lot of wood in that enclosure, Carl. For a laser. There we go. Right, let's try this again, shall I we? I think I would be inclined to um, line it on the inside with something. I don't know why. That was an annoying noise. Are you sure that's front left? Yeah.
That's an annoying series of noises. Oh, it's homing. That's why he's trying to do a home. So it shouldn't be doing that. Hold on. Hold the phone. So edit. Paint it with some lead paint, Carl, so that if it does catch up, that the fumes are going to get you as well. Queer soap. <laughs> like some really, some really evil stuff. Yeah. So that nice nineteen fifties lead paint. Auto home when starting up. There we go. Right. Let's try this again, shall we? All right, let's see if we can do this again. To where we find out it's not compatible with Lightburn. <laughs> G-code locked out during alarm or, or jog state. That seems like a fun series of words, doesn't it? G code locked out during alarm or jog state. Error nine. What the hell does that mean? Table isn't level. Now nah, the table's roughly level. Would that be? Hold fire. Seems a little excessive. I mean, it's a little unlevel, <laughs> but like, surely that can't. Unless it has to be true level in order for it to work. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not putting that level of effort in. I'm sorry. I refuse. And as well, it was trying to home first a minute ago. Sounds like you've just proved the safety options were. It's really possible, but surely it's going to be perfectly level, right? Yeah, it's got to be true level. Right, so. Let's move that up a little bit and see whether or not we're trying to move out of bounds or something. Machine settings. Just having a look to see if it. Enable J jogging and all sorts of other stuff. Cut selected graphics, yeah. G code locked out while alarm module. What does that mean? Okay, fine, hold on. And everything else is in German. Great. All right. Time to Google things. Maybe we are giving this one away. Apparently, you can unlock the command. Oh, okay. It's 
So I'm assuming I need to probably put that in my machine settings then. So it says here, so for those who are interested, error nine is normal when powering up, apparently. Um, GRBL enters alarm mode to force the origin point because it cannot know its position. To unlock, all you have to do is you can unlock the arm by doing a dollar sign X command. You should be careful because this does not allow GRBL to know its position. It's also possible to deactivate the alarm mode by doing something else. So I've just put that into my start G code and I reckon that'll work. For some odd reason, when you first start up, you have to hit the stop button on light burn, then you can continue with no issues. Oh, for God's sake. Because that's a useful feature. <laughs> Right, well, it's going. So, there's that. <laughs> I was just watching the opening credits to Peacemaker. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it's so well, good. It might be better if I had to sound up. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So, for a start, I want to be really clear. I'm obsessed with the song. Like, I'm obsessed with the song. It's 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 brilliant. It's opened me up to a new whole Swedish uh, Swedish rock band uh, situation. Oh, hold on. Oh, anyone no. asked, I had these on the whole time, and you can't rewind to find out. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's doing a decent job. So I'm just I'm just engraving the honey badger logo at the moment, just our text logo, so we can sort of show it working. Safety first, Russ. No, that yes. was more like say, that was more like safety second. Well, we already know that the safety features on this are so powerful that you can't even turn it on. These start these glasses have immediately steamed up on my face. No, almost instantaneously. I thought I was getting really quick cataracts. Immediate onset cataracts. It's immediate. Just because <laughs> <laughs> I've taken so long to put the glasses on, and immediately got cataracts from it. <clears throat> you might wake I'm up in the night now with like terrible archi. Yeah. Yeah. I can't look around. There are a couple of metal surfaces in here that it could bounce off of, but I don't think lasers are quite that sneaky. My mate, my mate did that once. He was doing some welding and uh, he forgot his goggles, so he put ray bands on, and he woke up about two o'clock in the morning with archive. I was completely blind. Really? Yeah. He got his vision oh. back. Oh, that doesn't really seem like a, that doesn't really seem like a cautionary tale in that instance. Well, it was because he fell over, he fell over the toilet and smashed his head in the bath. But blind people don't do that. Why would he do that? Because he could see, and then all of a sudden he couldn't. I think it took him by surprise. What? And he Needs poo? No, no, no. Sorry, he, you're I... telling me that he got out of bed completely with the gift of sight, went <laughs> went for his morning constitution. No, no, this is in the middle of the night. This is like, so this is like two in the morning. Eyeball. No, this was like two in the morning. Right. It's for some context, his nickname from child, like from childhood, was Biff. Right. What? Because you look. This like is a, a person of, uh... who chose to wear a pair of Ray Bans to weld. It's not unfeasible that he woke up blind and decided to go to the toilet. I mean, it sounds to me like he found the toilet. In in all fairness to him, he did find it. Unfortunately, he found it with his shin. Well, no one wants no one wants to kick a toilet. No, he's dead now. He's dead now. Yeah. How hard did he kick it? It weren't the archive. Oh, I was going to say. I was like, Jesus Christ, that's sorry he took a turn. Yeah. No, it wasn't that. So, almost done. Come out really nice, actually. So it's a little hard with part of our logo, because part of our logo is just shadow. But, um, but the honey badger part's coming out really nicely. I wonder if I could engrave it on some jeans. Yeah. But I feel like gene art is a really, it's, it's a lost passion. 
You should be jazzle both legs of all the jeans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I should. I think it's the future. With like like a bad Louis Vuitton pattern. <laughs> So they don't oh, quite line up and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'd definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I could ruin a pair of jeans if I really wanted to. Problem is, though, is I mean, I have to do the test. They would instantly, first. They'd instantly, instantly become your party jeans. Yeah, they would be. Because it would be a conversation starter. How did you do that? I have a laser. And then... I feel no, like I what you would immediately do is then get yourself a denim jacket. What's a match? Yeah. Double denim and and uh, did he wear his well <coughs> to drive when he couldn't find his Ray Ban sunglasses? Fair point. Now, that may actually be part. true because he actually died in a car crash. So maybe, yeah. <laughs> well that was uh that was a fun story. <laughs> And it almost exactly the way I expected it to as well. Yeah. Right, so unplug that, take off my glasses. So without doing any burn tests, this was on uh this was eighteen hundred at sixty, and really it should have been going a bit faster than that. But hold on. All right, there we go. Oh, terrible. One second. There we go. So pretty clean, not perfect. I probably could have, as I say, I probably could have done 2,500 on the speed and probably gone down to 50 on the, uh, <coughs> on the power. But I mean, that's bang on there, like. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not a bad for a first try with never having used this laser before. That's not a bad result straight out of the box. Um, Nice and easy to assemble. I suppose we should actually see whether or not the safety settings work, shouldn't we? So let's pop that back under there. Put that over. Because it's all well and good saying that you've got... Literally, there we go. It's all well and good saying you've got safety instructions, but if you don't know... Seems like an odd way to have to power it on, that you have to, like, that you have to like press and hold it. I suppose it can't be turned on by accident. Well, yeah, I would agree with that. Right, so you yeah. press stop. Yeah, I think you should do that, Nigel. Right, so there we go. So it started engraving. You lift it up. Well, that's <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, there you go. If you bang it, sorry. So it's if you, if you knock it, not if you lift it up gently. Um, but uh, yeah, if you knock it, then it stops. There you go. That's the safety feature. On the off chance that during your house burning down, someone gently knocks this, it'll immediately turn off. Safety. Perhaps it's so that if the fire extinguisher ball drops on it, it turns off. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so hold on, just let me get this. Let me get this right. What it said. What it said. It. It. What it. What its things are. So it's active position. Right. So it's literally it's a G-Shock tester. So you have to you have to actually knock it, and if you knock it, it detects the G. It detects the shock, but it doesn't. It's not a. It's not a linear sensor. To figure out whether or not you're level. So doing that was unnecessary. Um, there's an active connection control, yeah. Exposure limitation. So if if the late it turns off the laser if there's no movement for a long time, okay. Prevents burning holes in your table or starts a garage fire. And I want to be clear, it says garage fire in inverted commas, like either garages or fires aren't real. <laughs> This is what people say could happen, but we don't believe it. We don't believe that garages are a thing because we haven't seen a garage ourselves. It's like an anti-vax argument. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen no, it. It's not that, real. That, that's, 
that's that's true, Dell's logos. If the house is on fire, it won't turn off, but when the roof falls on it, it will. It'll immediately stop then. And yeah, there's an exposure limitation to prevent you burning holes in your table or start a garage fire. Amazing. Um, <laughs> there's fuse over current protection. Laser module will be cut off after shutdown. The power supply will be cut off if the power input is abnormal. Okay, so I'm assuming it means it's got surge protection. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's done what it said in the tin, right? That's done exactly what it said it would do. Sort of, except for that knocking thing, which was garbage. But <laughs> I'd be interested to know why anybody would buy the SF version, which is this, and not the LF version, um, which has got the air assist on it. Especially bearing in mind, they're literally the same price. Because it doesn't just come with a different nozzle. It also comes with um, all the tubing. It just doesn't come with the actual pump, which you can pick up off Amazon for like 10, 15 pounds. There's a little airflow regulator on it and everything. Like it looks really good. I can't tell you how it functions because I haven't got it, but it does in theory look really good. I quite like the fact that that's, um, that, that just attaches. Like that's nice. Um, there isn't a way to add air assist to this though. So, like, there's no there's no hole in this. So on the um, on the I don't even know if I can take it off. No, I can't. But on the uh, on the other one, on the atom stack, there's actually a, there's actually a hole in this lens cap, and you can fit a uh, you can fit an air assist to it. And actually, I think there's yeah there is on here as well. So if I show you, right. So this is the one that comes on it, right? So obviously you've got the main hole, which is where the laser goes through, but nothing else. This is capped off. This is the head that came on our Hydra which we're testing at the moment. And you can see that there's a hole here and a hole here. This hole here would obviously be for, um, for doing, um, for putting an air assist nozzle through. SF is supposed to be better at engraving fine lines. Air assist LF better for cutting from what I've read. So I suppose the only debate you could make there is that because the air assist is on there, it must make it longer and that therefore makes it further away from the material. So the beam might get a little bit. Um, hmm. All right, I'd buy that, I suppose. I'd, I could I could believe that at least. How much does, is the actual, surely you can just, can you not just buy an LF kit though? You must be able to buy an LF kit, surely. Yes, really. Yeah, you could drill the cap out. But then if you wanted air assist, for the same price, just buy the one with air assist. Yeah, I was just looking to see whether or not. So £112 for the laser on its own, which is quite surprising. 60 quid for the uh for the offline control board. So it's got a it's got a, a little screen that you can buy that plugs into the USB and you can print from an SD card. The only reason why I didn't really like that on the Atom stack is because the Atom stack doesn't have those safety features. So it doesn't have the auto shut off. It doesn't have the, if it stays in one place for too long, it turns the laser off. It will just keep going until it thinks it's done. So it would be contextually quite easy to burn through your table or to, or to, or to and if you've got offline printing, then the temptation is to put an SD card in it, set it off to print, and then go off and do whatever you wanted to you know, just go off and do something else. So I sort of I, I, I get I get why I get why it doesn't have it. This at least has some safety features on it. So I like that. Um the laser's function, if I'm willfully honest, appears to be pretty much exactly the same as the one that's on the Atom stack. I can't even see anything really different in the design of the laser modules between the two of them. I would actually bet that if you had the same mounting bracket, you just put the one on here and it would probably work. 
like it like it doesn't seem any different i like the fact this has got grounding on a lot of different places so it grounds out the motors grounds out the tool head and it grounds out the power supply i like that that's a good feature and um, that the other one didn't have and this has got slightly better cable management so you sort of you, you clip in the cables at the back it's a little less sort of messy um but yeah so we'll uh, we'll do some more testing we'll engrave some denim maybe make a really cool jeans jacket who knows uh we'll uh, we'll engrave some of the uh i mean the steel is thick like that's like that's two mil thick steel so i don't know what you think it's doing it. with that it's not gonna cut it probably engrave it it must it can't cut it no of course no, it, it can't. can't cut it um but it could engrave it i suppose so and it does say leave, on here so leave the plastic on the back of it and just engrave straight onto that plastic yeah, I don't think that would work. I don't think that's how it works. So I'm just looking to see. I mean, there's some very, very deep engraving that it's doing on one of them. I don't think that's what it does. But wood, bamboo, paper, leather. It says it'll do it on stainless. And to be fair, we have the um, we have the honey badger scraper from the uh, from the from the atom stack, and that worked a treat. And that's obviously that's steel, so I guess it can do that. I have some tiles painted that you want to oh, <coughs> oh, yeah, ceramics. Painted tiles are great to engrave. It does say plastics. Seems better to get the LF and not and just not use the air assist when doing engraving. Yeah, so if, if I was recommending one, I would probably say get the air assist one. Because I think that it, I mean it does say. The, it does say the SF is better for engraving and the LF is better for cutting. Well, the thing is, you get um, the air assist one. If you don't want to use the air assist, you don't. But then if you do realise you do want to use it, then you've got it there. Yeah. That's open to debate, debate James. Is it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Compatible with laser GRBL and Lightburn. We use Lightburn just because I find Lightburn a lot easier. Um saying it's got a low center of gravity and therefore is more stable than competitors i don't know that it's that much lower there's my special uh i don't know where my uh, thing's gone no i don't know let me take measures i don't think it's that much lower i think it may be like uh, but that way you have to buy or 3d print your own air assist yeah and to be honest with you i would bet that it would be easier to 3D print one of these. If you decided, if you decided you didn't want the air assist on, surely you could just 3D print a guard that would go over the bottom of it and then just not use the air assist. The air assist isn't just like, so the air assist is actually a, a piece of metal. It's a piece of aluminium, it looks like, that screws into the end of the nozzle and then comes out with uh, with push connectors. So, um, so it's, it's, you know, it does, it would mean that the laser was higher so Carl's just got the um, Carl's got the A5. He's put an air assist on the A5, but his air assist is 3D printed. So you could actually debate probably that, bearing in mind how similar these lasers are, I would bet that any air assist that worked for that um, atom stack would almost definitely work for this as well. I would have thought. Um, and I would bet you could modify that to work with an air assist. Like, I don't think it would be that hard, personally. Um, yeah, I mean, does what it says on the tin. It's a nice machine. Does what it does what it's supposed to do. I've got no. Uh, I've got no. So compared with the SF, it has a longer depth of field and is more suitable for cutting. Compared with the LF, it has a smaller spot. And it, right, okay. So the FS has a short focus. SF. And that means that it's that it has a finer engrave. The LF has a longer focus and is therefore better for cutting, which is why they include the air assist. Using air assist will extend the life of the laser as I've dropped the power down a good few percent. Oh, okay, fair enough. Enhanced accuracy and all of that. Right, okay, guys. So, I mean, it looks really quite similar to a lot of other lasers. 
So the other Ochoa lasers, you're right, it does look fairly similar to those. So um, there's a couple, I mean, but do the tall heads look any different? I don't know that they do. There's the Ochoa, the only one that I can find that's, so there's the, there's the Laser Master. I don't really know what the difference of that is. So that's a... Oh, it's just bigger. The Laser Master 2 has got a 400 by 430 build. They all look the same. You can stop and change the laser heads as you want. Yeah. And they all look like they're using the same ones as well, to be honest with you. All fixed focus. Yeah. Engraving speeds. Yeah, I don't really think any of them look materially different from the others, to be honest. So I would probably pick up the one that I'd probably pick up the one that has the build volume that you want. Um, well, I mean, and the, the Laser Master 2 is currently sold out, whereas the Laser 2. Someone really needs to have a think about these naming conventions. Um, but uh, yeah, the Laser 2 is actually currently in stock and at 200 pounds. Oh, sorry, if you were buy sorry, if you're buying the SF, then it comes out at comes out at 276. At 276 for that, that is a that is a really good tool that you can use. I'd still like to win this one, just saying. Well, the problem is, Russ, is that I'm assuming you're based in the US, which means we'd have to ship this from the UK to the US. I don't know if you can ship a class four laser product. I don't know if we're allowed to in the pro in like I don't know if you're allowed to like I <coughs> DHL or the or anyone would accept a class four laser product. I bet they wouldn't. Well, anyway, we'll find out. But we may very well give this away, Russ. Not specifically to you, but we may we may put it up in the competition. We'll wait and see. I'll pay the shipping. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wait and see, Russ. We'll wait and see. We'll have a look and see um whether or not we'll put this up for um well we'll put this up in the um in the competition that we're going to do haven't quite decided on the format yet but i think to be honest it's just going to be a it's just going to be a case of enter you don't have to do form. anything and then we're yeah just a just a free draw that we do for anybody when's hiring a couple of chaps in the us to be in the company expand internationally <laughs> so <laughs> i don't think we're quite there yet we've only reached 5k i'll make you a deal if we reach Oh no! Actually, I'm not going to do that. Last hundred. Yeah, that was pardon. Hundred k. All right, a hundred k, and we'll look to see if we can get a partner in the US. There you go. Right. Thank you very much for joining us, guys and dolls. Loads coming up on the channel. We have just finished. Oh, that is really nice, actually. <laughs> so we've just finished. Um, doing a vase on the delta wavy vase that's come out really really nice <coughs> really nice first layer there it's on campaign started now hey look man if we get to 100k just so you can get a laser i can live with that <laughs> uh thanks very much for joining us guys and dolls we've got loads coming up over the next few weeks we've got the end of three belt video coming out We've got the uh, we've got the Ben Five video coming out. We've got the FL Sun video coming out. We're reviewing this one as well. Loads and loads. Plus, we'll be doing the competition. So, thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe <coughs> for anyone uh, that uh, meaning you, James. Oh, right, okay. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe for anyone who hasn't already. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Bye.